bless you, and welcome back to Heart Ministry Radio Network and the Extraordinary People Broadcast. I am your host, Brenda Divers, and before you go further, you're not seeing three. You know, you're not seeing triplets, but <laughs> this is my mom, my mother, Minister Constance Hatchett, and my sister, Minister Frances Hatchett, and we are, we are interviewing them today for the Extraordinary People Broadcast. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled, okay? So we know we have a conference coming up, and we want to talk a little bit about the conference, but before we get into that, my favorite question, oh, I'm sorry, say good afternoon to our listening audience. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And we want to talk about your conversion experience. That's always my favorite question. And my view would start, and then Minister Friendly. My conversion experience. I was raised in the church. And my friends and I, when, when church service was going on, my friends and I would observe certain people who would get up and shout. <laughs> and for some reason, I associated salvation with shouting because people would say, Sister So-and-so got the Holy Ghost. and she got mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost, she started shout to shout. Mm -hmm. And so we thought that that's what it meant, that you, when you were saved, you shouted. And of course, as I grew a little older, I, I didn't attend the church as much as I should have. And, but I decided to go back. In my young adulthood, I started to go back to church. And I went to a Sunday evening service and I heard the gospel. Mm. This time I heard the gospel. The Lord spoke to my heart and I confessed my sins and I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. And I, still had that question, was I supposed to shout? And I actually asked the Lord to give it to me because I thought <laughs> I would really know that I was saved because I could shout. shout. Yeah. But I didn't shout. I haven't shouted yet and I've been saved for about <laughs> 60 years. However, I understand that it was important for me to read the Word, to yeah. be in fellowship with other believers, go to Bible study, attend Sunday school, do the things that were necessary for me to grow in Christ so that I understand the uh, significance of my salvation so that mm -hmm. I can be a better witness for the Lord so that I can have the opportunity to teach the word, to preach the word, mm -hmm. to share the word of God with, uh, with others so that they might uh, be transformed by this gospel. Amen. And so that's my experience in, in conversion and, and having the opportunity to share with others and then experience them coming to the Lord Jesus Christ and them being witnesses for him as well. So that's my experience. Amen. Amen. Minister Freeman. My conversion period was at Calvary Gospel Chapel where we grew up in the church. Uh, it was Dr. B. Sam Hart. Mm -hmm. After every message, there was that call for salvation. I was between 11 and 12. Mm -hmm. And that was the time that I decided to go up and I would get saved that day. So that was the day that I was saved. And I've been saved since 11 and 12. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the growth process, we were Bible study. And then my mother would have us do Bible study at home. Mm -hmm. and we also had on designated weekends where it was just maybe an hour to mm -hmm. prayer. prayer. And just growing up in the ministry, I uh, moved out of Philadelphia and then I came back to Philadelphia where now it's more into what God is leading me to do. I've been ordained as a minister. It's been two years in county and the Lord has just given us so much to do. And I just thank God that when he keeps you, he keeps you. So I just appreciate him and I love him for keeping me mm -hmm. and now and it's not like it's a burden to be a minister because you're spreading the gospel as we're supposed to do so amen. that's where I am right now as far as ministry is concerned. Amen. Amen. And I want to give the parents um, encouragement. <laughs> if you don't think your children hear what you're doing and <laughs> see <laughs> and appreciate what you're doing. Uh, my sister mentioned that we would do prayer, like, you know, we had prayer chains. And we would, my mother would get us up very early in the morning and we would pray in the morning before school and all of that. And I just remember being 
do we really have to, is it all of this? We have to pray when it's dark. I mean, I never <laughs> could get it while we, had to, while we had to get up so early and pray. And I would be the one on my knees falling asleep. But I'm telling you, that was a legacy that my mother, her grandmother had placed in her and how she placed that into us where we are doing the same thing and how we trained our children in the same way. So parents don't get discouraged when they're Roll it on the floor and complain it. They understand, you know, the word is true. Train up a child and where it should go. When they're old, they will not depart from it. So, you know, kudos. <laughs> I know that she, it was five of us. So you can just imagine what that was like. Not one. Not one, but five. <laughs> five. Yes. Praise the Lord. So we're talking about, um, just a little bit, I wanted to know for our, for our viewers, just a little more about Minister Pastor Constance Hatcher, the woman, and Minister Francis, the woman. Can you tell us just a little more about you as women? I know we, we don't like to talk about ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. We have to really think sometime when they say, well, who are you? What, you know, mm -hmm. but just a little, because I'm telling you, rich, 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 so much substance. You know, this is a, a keg of dynamite. Oh, thank right. you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah. The case. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you know, just you know, just being around her, just anybody who's around her knows the blessing that you are, just for being around you. So, if you would just share with our viewers just a little more about. You. Well, as you probably know by now, <laughs> I'm the mother of five. Mm -hmm. Five wonderful women of God. I thank you. And what I what I'm grateful for is that I don't have to pray. Ask God to save my children. Mm. I thank God that He has saved them, that they've all heard the call Praise and God. given their lives to the Lord. What a blessing that is to me. I have five wonderful daughters. I have many, many uh, <laughs> grands and great grands. And I thank God for that. I am a retired social service provider and a counselor. I've had a rich history in the work world that the Lord is allowing me to use the skills that I have developed in the world of work uh, to transfer those skills into our, our ministry. I have had the opportunity and the privilege to write a $15 million uh, proposal for our Sanctuary Fellowship Worship Center and Beacon House Ministries. It has not come to fruition yet, but I'm trusting yes. God and I know He's true to His Word. Yes. And so we thank God for the wonderful things that He will be able to provide to the community as a result of what He's given us uh, yes. to do. So that's, that's who I am. I think I'm a great cook. Yes. Hey. Yes. And I, love, and I love music. Anybody will tell you that. Absolutely. I love music. Absolutely. Yes. I love to serve. I have a servant's yes. heart, and my gift is service. And that's who I am. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Frances Hatchet, the fourth of five girls. In a nutshell, it's hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, as far as my life, I grew up in Philadelphia. I went to, I moved to Long Island, New York. Mm -hmm. I studied cosmetology. I uh, came back to Philadelphia and went to massage therapy school. And then I went to uh, New Life Ministry. It's a, a missionary uh, training school. So I did four years there. So now it's all, it's amazing how you do all these things oh, in life. Come together. But now it's all coming together where the Lord wants me to do. And it's even through doing hair or doing massage that I have that ability to touch. And just as a relationship that you can spread the word that way. Sometimes when you do massage, you don't even have to say anything. Yeah. And I just thank God for where he's placed me. I do have a daughter, one daughter, and she's 27. And wow. she's, she's a good buddy. So with that, um, through life changes and where the Lord has placed me, I just, I don't regret anything. Mm -hmm. It was oh, all learning reason. experience yeah. and you count it all good. People may say, well, I would not have done that, but it wasn't your situation. Mm -hmm. It was the situation that God has placed me in. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the road. It was, it was a bumpy one for a long time, but I just thank God that 
you persevere. And I think, or not think, I know it's because of the foundation Amen. that uh, was laid for us from our, our great mother here, yeah. our matriarch, mm -hmm. and that sustained me where I have the confidence to continue. And, yeah. You know, just being thankful because of her, yeah. also by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is yeah. a definite guide. Mm -hmm. yes. And to to continue to go on. And I know with what I do, it's gonna be enough to encourage women because mm -hmm. women continually need to be encouraged. Amen. You're never finished. This work is never finished never until the Lord takes you home. Mm -hmm. It's like when the Pope dies and it's over, the same thing, but we're going further. Mm -hmm. Even after this world is done, yeah. we still have more to do when Christ takes us. So. I just thank God for where I am and where I'm going, mm -hmm. and that's where we are. That's good. That's really good. So again, the five five girls. I'm in the middle, <laughs> so two under and two older. But there was never uh, there was never a dull moment. I don't think uh, <laughs> growing up, growing up, and um, from that, you know, we we all sang and we were as children. This is a story I love to share is that whenever we were in timeout, we would sing and bang and all of that. And you said one time you asked, you said to our dad, you said, who's in timeout? Us or them? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we were singing and carrying on. But that's how we, you know, that's what we did. We sang and, and had a good time together. And um, so this is just a little piece of the family, but I'm so grateful to be here with my mom and my sister. So we're going to talk about, oh, I want to say something about the journaling. Um, Minister Franny was, when we started radio, I don't know if you recall, she did an interview with us and she talked about journaling. And she um, she journals quite a bit. And I think you had so many journals at the time, but you, you really journaled your life. And how important that is that we, that we journal, that we write things down um, because even, when God performs a miracle in our lives, if we don't write it down, we kind of forget about it. You know, I mean, the major thing that he did, and when we need something to grab on, we don't have it because it wasn't written down. Mm. You know, so the importance of writing the thing, you know, writing the <laughs> vision, making it plain, but writing down those things that God does for you on a daily basis. So you'll have something to go back to. Okay, I'm, I'm going through this now, but this is what he did, yeah. you know. And that was a great interview she did. So journaling is something we want to really continue on. Mm -hmm. So today we're talking about the sixth annual women's conference for the Sanctuary Fellowship Worship Center and Beacon House Ministries. And so tell us about um, the theme this year, when it's going to be, and all that information. The theme this year is Return to Purity. Mm -hmm. And it will be held at the First African Presbyterian Church, which is located at 4159 West Girard Avenue. That's right on the corner of 42nd and Girard. December 7th, which is Saturday, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Everything is free. Mm -hmm. Continental breakfast, lunch, gifts, games, and lots of fun and fellowship. That's going to be a great day. So again, December the 7th, all roads lead to um, First African Presbyterian Church. Uh, what's the address again? 4159 West Girard Avenue. It's on the corner of 42nd and Girard. Enter through the red doors on 42nd Street. Amen. So we're going to have a good time. So six years, that's really incredible. Six years six already. Six years already. Yes. Wow. And we've had a good time every year. Every year. And the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, God does something different for us every mm -hmm. year. So come on out. You know, it's, again, we're a couple of weeks before that. So check your, your calendars. Hopefully you can set aside that time to, to come and fellowship with us. Our speaker is Minister Francis mm -hmm. this year. And Purity, what is it? Um, return. Return, return to, to purity. purity. I love that. Where did that theme come from? It, of course, it was laid on my heart by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. A lot of things we take for granted that yeah. it's ourselves, yeah. but it was definitely the Holy Spirit. And what intrigued me was the dove. 
the dove. It's, it's not just the pigeon. Oh. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> it's the pigeon, pigeon, but it's not just the pigeon. <laughs> and I love that. But Never it's a beautiful it one. And it's we're looking at the spiritual aspect mm -hmm. of the dove and how it relates to women. Mm -hmm. And women are beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we need to return back to our beauty mm -hmm. and return back to our first call. Yeah. And it's going after the flood. Mm -hmm. And how the Lord use that dove, mm -hmm. how women can be used just mm -hmm. like the dove, oh. and remember your substance. Amen. Yeah, women so can be used like the dove. Mm. That's intriguing, <laughs> you know, because sometimes we, we kind of, God, what are we here for? You know, yes. what are we doing? Yes. You know, do you love us like you love men? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and all of that. But he reassures us and assures us every day. Yes, absolutely. You are not a mistake. You know, you were on my mind. Yes. yes. And um, the returning, he can use us like he did the dove. That's exciting. Just that That's alone. Sweet. I know you want to hear about that. Yes, I do. love Absolutely. that. I love that. And she said the Holy Spirit laid it on her heart. Yes. So again, we know this is going to be rich. There's always good food. <laughs> it's always good always fun <laughs> and good fellowship. Yes. So again, on December 7th, you want to make your way to um, the sixth annual ladies conference for the sanctuary fellowship worship center and you talked about the um the the grant the you know the the dream and what god laid on your heart to write that and i'm telling you if you've never been that, through that process that was huge yes. how you wrote all the programs out <laughs> that you'd like to see you know she wrote that vision and made it plain and you know it's it, with the government and it was approved so it's something that she's just waiting waiting for god to send you know what he said he would do so it's exciting um and you can all what you can also sow your seed that's the the real good thing I, you know when people are catching your vision and encouraged by your vision it's always good to have a place where they can go and sow yes so what is your uh, what's the website mm -hmm. sfw center Dot com, com. Mm -hmm. is, is the website. Okay. Phone number is 215-921-5017. Amen. Amen. And there was a there was a campaign that you were um yes we uh, it was did. called one Mi one, one means, means one million one million mm -hmm. and that was uh, my sister the Lord had given my sister Nancy um, the vision of that and that was everybody just sowing a dollar. A dollar. A dollar into the ministry. Yes. One means one million. So if a million of us sold a dollar, you know, what kind of impact? Yeah. You know, you never know what you're what you're holding, what your might. Yes. You know, how it would right. impact. If you just have a dollar, you can sow it into the ministry. If a million of us get together and do that, you know, how impactful that will be. So I'm Absolutely. certain we have to um, reinitiate that. Mm -hmm. One means one million. Mm -hmm. And again, if God gives you a dollar to sell, why not sow it into the Sanctuary Fellowship Worship Center? Yes. One dollar. Yes. How about that? Yes. When you think of it in terms, it doesn't even seem, that's not a big deal at all, you know. So think about that, you know. And we just pray that the Lord will stir you up yes. in that and that you will um, want to sow a seed into this this wonderful wonderful ministry and again labored because <laughs> i was a i was fortunate to be a part of that process yes. and she labored and wrote all of the programs out that you know the lord gave her to put in this um and this is actually what would you call it it's a it's a church it's a school they're trade schools associated with this yes. and um it's a legacy it's a legacy for our community. Mm -hmm. You know, everything in one place. Yes. I SFW, that's for Sanctuary Fellowship Worship Center. SFW. Dot com. Dot com. Yes. And just, you know, again, look around, sow your seed as God, you know, touches your heart for that. And again, come out to the sixth annual women's conference for the Sanctuary Fellowship Worship Center. And Beacon House Ministries, that's a whole other oh, piece yes. of it, right? <laughs> right, but we will be there, um, there to welcome you um, to the sixth annual conference. I know that's our time, and I'm just so appreciative that you guys were able to come and, and talk about 
with this, this conference, this awesome um, conference. Um, is there a word of inspiration and I would say, Mom, for the women of today, is there a word of inspiration? There is a word of inspiration for the women of the day. I have to read the scripture to you because I want to make sure it's correct. Mm. Uh, what I thought about for encouragement to women is this. Be reassured that the presence of God is a promise. No matter how rough it gets, He is not only with you but he is there holding you by your right hand and the scripture that I have for you is Zephaniah 317 mm. I love the scripture I love it I can't even yes. imagine that God would be rejoicing over me and singing over me mm. every time I read I it I am that. so encouraged yes. and it reads this way mm. the Lord your God is with you he is mighty to save he will take great delight, delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Can you imagine mm. a God like that? He will rejoice over you with singing. Imagine Amen. him rejoicing over you and singing while he's holding you up by your right hand. Praise what, a yes. what a beautiful what picture. Image. What a beautiful picture. What a God. Oh, what a God. Mighty, mighty God. Mighty God. Praise the name of the Lord, a God that rejoices over us with, with singing. singing. <laughs> the God of the universe mm. rejoicing over us. Can you imagine? Singing. And can sing. And can and sing. Can How sing. about that? <laughs> oh, I, I'm telling you, that's really one of my and favorites too. When, you, when you just think of the yes. awesomeness of God and how he takes the time to rejoice over us. Mm. With singing. Bless the Lord. Amen. The Lord. Amen. So again, that's our time. We have been speaking with Minister Constance and Francis Hatchett of the Sanctuary Fellowship Worship Center and Beacon House Ministries. We'll talk about that at another time. Yeah. But um, and again, the conference, the sixth annual women's conference, come out, come out. You'll see the flyer back here. You'll see it all over social media. But again, a wonderful time in the Lord. We just encourage you, if you are able that day, come join us at the sanctuary. <laughs> Amen. And that's our time. Thank you for tuning into Heart Ministry Radio Network and Extraordinary People Broadcast. I'm your host, Brenda Divers, with my mother and my sisters, Minister Constance and Francis Hatchett. God bless you. Join us often, heartministryradio.com. God bless you.